Boys, welcome back. Hey. Episode 61. Huge. Daniel. Huge weekend of racing. Welcome back. Missed you last yeah, week, mate. Thanks, mate. Uh, good to be back. You had your arch nemesis um, filling in your seat last week. <laughs> yeah, what's his name again? <laughs> Damn B. Damn B, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ex F1 journalist. Yeah, we lose a few followers when he jumps on. That's all right. <laughs> Bring him back this week, boys. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Jump on me back. That's it. Take, Take it to, to the, the promised land. land. Hey. <laughs> yeah, couldn't quite get there on Saturday night, but he had a good he had a good match. Yeah, you beat us by twelve points of a VFL side, but yeah, no worries. <laughs> Oh, uh, wow. Big week. A big weekend of motorsport. I mean, probably one of the biggest of the year. Yeah. Um, with Monaco and and obviously um MotoGP as well. Um, great couple of days, great couple of races. So. You a bit tired today? You got a couple Stuffed. of hours sleep? <laughs> <Stuffed>. <laughs> yeah, it was um it was a big weekend. But um like we'll get on some I think we'll get on some MotoGP first. Yeah. Yep. Uh F1. We'll get we've got to dissect that a little bit because that was uh that was two and a half hours of my life that I won't get back. So <laughs> in the in the early Monday morning as well. <laughs> yeah. Um just want to take care of some business first, guys. Um we are always proudly sponsored by MJ Trading Cards. They are Australia's biggest sport car breakers, NBA, NFL, and uh, MB, NLB, and, and obviously soccer as well. They do it seven nights a week, 10 to 15 breaks. So jump on their website. It's on our bio. Um, get involved, guys. It's a big community. So want to um, we'll definitely want to support them. Yeah, get around them. So yeah, had, a few, awesome. um, had a few followers touch base, and, and um, it's been a good collaboration. So just jump on board with that. And then... Friday, uh, Thursday, Thursday night. Yeah. It's come around quick. We hey. have got our wrist watch event coming up. Wrist watch check uh, run co owned uh, co, co ran by Grip Auto. Diamond Brick Auto. Grip Auto is a legend. Uh, get down here. If we, is there any tickets left? It's been nearly sold out. I, I think, think isn't so. It? Yeah. yeah. Close two. Sixty dollars tickets. Food and beverages provided. Um, guys, seven, eight big watch brands meeting together. Uh, so super excited for that as well. Yeah, it'll be a really good night. Thursday night this week at Benzina, Eight Water Road, Preston. Beautiful. Love it. Mm. MotoGP. Bro, what a weekend, huh? It was a big one. Uh, just amazing. Um, Bagnaia just does it again, doesn't he? He's the sister, the epitome of it. We said it <laughs> the last few weeks. The epitome Sunday of a Sunday man. I mean, nine nine mistakes. corners left. He could have had the double. But. He's the ultimate Saturday fraud watch. But. Yeah. <laughs> He threw it, uh, threw it down the road, didn't he? Very Literally. unlike him as well. Just a no pressure, just throwing it down the road. Like, <sighs> I don't know. Do, do we know what happened out of all of that? Um, well, listening to listen to the commentary, it was like three riders crashed in the same spot from yeah, the league. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, all of them said they weren't offline. They were in the same gear. They're on the same breaking point. Yeah, it's not like they were pushing. And they were all in separate parts of the race. One was at the start, one was at the middle, one was at the end. Yeah. So tires weren't as much of a factor. So I wonder if it was like a because of the left-hand side of the tires a bit colder because you've got yeah, that massive right-hander. And, then and it's a low-grip right track. Yeah. There's so many things to take into consideration. Yeah, but that's um, right. It's the whole, whole um, like with MotoGP and F1 this weekend, it's always been about tyres, tyre yeah. conservation, tyre wear. Like, yeah. Well, man, look at Moto2. Yeah, Moto2. Um, we'll touch on Moto2 later, but that was one of the best races. What, oh, yeah. man, I loved it. Yeah, that was a it great was an race. incredible awesome. race. Yeah, so, so good to see. How was um, Binder, talking about like tyre wear and everything, he's crashed. I don't know if you guys saw it in qualifying or practice. He did the flip-flop yeah. and he, he got airborne and then just obviously lost it in one of his two crashes like in like about did five he crash, minutes. Did he crash twice? In the same spot, the same... Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah it was... Uh, obviously, that's a bit of a dodgy spot for the KDM. Yeah, that's right. Uh, results, I guess. We're on to that. Mm. Yeah, so sprint race results. Uh, Alicia Spargo first. Mark Marquez second. Pedro Acosta third. Jorge Martin fourth. Anaya Bastianini fifth. Fabio Di Gin Antonio sixth. Jack Miller seventh. Maverick Vinales eighth. Marco Bezzecchi ninth. And Fabio Quadraro tenth. In the sprint. Nice, Fabio. Nice. Yeah, not bad, eh? And then main race, uh, Francesco Bagnaia first, Jorge Martin second, Mark Marquez third, Alicia Spargo fourth, Fabio Di Gin Antonio fifth, Raul Fernandez sixth, Ooh. Alex Marquez seventh, Brad Binder eighth, Fabio Quadraro ninth, and Miguel Oliveira tenth. Hey, Miguel. Miguel. Not bad. Chef Miguel tenth. <laughs> Chef Miguel. Throwing out paellas and whatnot. Um, a few comments on our Instagram on people saying, uh, who is this Raul Fernandez? <laughs> <laughs> Where does he come from? How does it happen though? Like how can he be so nowhere and then pop up? And sprint race, it was, it was, you know, it was yeah. 
he was, was looking on. cooking into that, um, yeah, that corner yeah. when he crashed. Fuck it. Yeah, I chucked no. a sneaky 20 on him, but didn't get up. But yeah, it was. Um, yeah, true. Yeah. I thought, you know, I actually thought that wasn't a bad shout that. Yeah, for sure. I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to like jinx you, mm. but I thought it was good. Yeah, I um, I don't know. He just, I mean, you have to remember he was, I mean, the same with Binder in the sprint race. Binder was probably a second or a second and a half up the road and then crashed. So, yeah. like, it was always going to be a really interesting result and Bagnai just comes out and wins, like, a crazy. And he did the he, big redemption against Martin, wasn't it? In very the same, simil- very took, similar ride. Yeah, and uh, overtook him in the corner that he crashed. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was very funny. I don't know if you guys paid much attention post-race on the cool-down lap, but he gave the good old... Into the corner. Oh, Did you see I didn't it see very that. Very funny. That's cool. If we can find it, we'll try and clip. Jeez, it. a bit of personality. Yeah, I was going to say, come on, a bit of personality in Man. the pecco. I was like, a... I thought yeah. he was going to go for his uh, <laughs> second three point, three point dunk. dunk. It was funny. I was sitting there, and I didn't even notice it. To be honest, my old man's like. What are you watching it on? Rewind it. I'm like, why? He's like, go look what Pecco did to the corner, and I just couldn't stop laughing. It was, um, <laughs> it was, it was good to see a bit of personality finally. But um, you know, it was something that I was really interested post race was Martin, how happy he was. Yeah. When he finished for finishing second, I think that showed a huge amount of maturity from yeah. from say yeah. a year ago for that, sure. Like absolutely, he 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 was leading the whole race. You know, obviously got beaten at the end, but he was still super stoked with the twenty points, and that showed a lot that he's there's grown, yeah, maturity wise. And he knows, you know, it's a long game. There's so many more races to come. Like just because you got second to Pecco doesn't mean you got to lose a world title all of a sudden. Like he's still thirty something points. Yeah, if he, got, it is. if he got re if he got passed by Pecco and then tried to chase him down and then crash, like you just know his head's not right. You yeah, know? yeah. But took the points, move on, Magello. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I think he played it really smart, to be mm-hmm. honest, and probably used up a bit of tie there with Pedro and yeah. getting through in the, the initial spot. So, not very, very mature ride. Different yeah. Jorge Martin. Yeah, that's right. It looks right. like it actually does. It so, looks like yeah. a championship contender. You know, still early Jorge doors. Martin. Still early doors, but um, hopefully it's a, t- it's a turn for him. That's mm. right. We're in the thick of the European rounds now, so it's uh, it's, so, it's so exciting. Oh, it's so no, good to I watch. I can't wait for this weekend. Oh, no, this is going to be massive. huge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, thoughts on Bastianini just losing the plot, it looked like. <laughs> Crazy. I don't know what was going on there. Was he just ignoring his pit board and the dash yeah, and everything like that? I think he just ignored all the messages. He probably thought he was hard done by getting pushed off the track. Yeah. In that first instance. But but mental just, wise, like how do you just ignore a long lap penalty? You can't you're not bigger than the, than no, the rules. No, you're not you're not bigger than the sport. No one ever is. Yeah, so Yeah, I just felt so that was such an arrogant thing to do. I mean, yeah, it was hard done by has to, you have to drop a second in that sector, but yeah. Just throwing away points though. Much yeah, needed right. points, especially in the team's championship or something like that, you know. So mm. true point. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, you I know? mean yeah, the constructors championship as yeah. well. Like it's um it's super important for them. So yeah, I don't know. I was reading something today, and they were saying that you know, he was saying that he got knocked, knocked by yeah. Spargo, and and he thought he was harsh done by, yeah. and then he tried again the next lap, and he pushed him off again. So, but you still got to serve the penalty, like mm. yeah, that's it. You just take it, deal with it, move on. I think he carried on a bit, and it was uncalled for. He was very actually, unlike him. I know. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say and, that. And like a, a, a race that was such such a side on tire wear where he is a master of it. Like he really could, really could have come in those last five laps and done something, but just spoiled it. Maybe it's a bit of an F you to someone. Maybe they've already said to him, look, you're not having this factory Ducati seat. And he's a bit, bit, uh, yeah. a bit unhappy in the background. Like who knows? You it could never be, know. It could you be never be know. So well, many. I guess we find out next week, don't we? Yeah, well, Mugello, that's the, time, that's, that's the deadline that's time apparently. Line. Who knows if they're actually going to do it, but... I kind of hope not. I like speculating so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 as soon as we're not going to keep going on about this because <laughs> last week we spoke about it for about an hour. Where, yeah. Who's going where, where? Where's everyone going? But like, yeah, it's just going to take one move and then everything. Yeah, moves. That's, yeah. Just, everything that's all right. It'll be a domino up. effect. A yeah. Aprilia dropping hints saying, "Oh, we might finally have an Italian rider on our bike." And yeah, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Um, Pego Bagnai though, I think. He needed that win. He needed to beat Bastianini, so it's pretty, pretty much a good, like a clutch effort for him Martin. to. So, sorry, to Martin, Martin yeah. to um, to take that win, and he did it. You know, smooth move, nothing too crazy, no, no, no real battle really. He just just took took over, and that but was a really super it. smart ride. Like he yeah. stuck back a, a second yeah. back, just looked after the tires, and then went like yeah. super super smart ride. Yeah, he still got one of the best race crafts. Yeah, so smooth to watch as well, man. I was watching it. And I was trying to think of how we always say he's on rails and I was yeah. really trying to focus on that. And I was like, geez, he really is. Yeah. Like, no, very rarely out of shape. Yeah. You know, sometimes coming into corners, yes, but through the corner itself and out of it, mm. it's it's pretty cool to watch. 
when mm. you you know contrasting styles with everyone else. But yeah, speaking of styles, did you guys notice? I, and I I felt like I was watching like a cost to taking a tight line in a lot of spots. There was a bit of that. There's a few different lines you can take in some of the corners there. So everyone's slightly different. True. And because he had the soft rear on as well, he probably had a bit more edge grip. Would he, yeah. would he have been there at the end, you reckon? No. Nah. No. Nah. No, nah, I, I think, think so. he would have faded hard. Yeah. yeah. He pushed too much. Well, that's, Martin had tire issues. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And he had the mediums and on. And he was going hard from the start. But look at Marquez, though. He, he held it on and he was in the pack the whole race. Yeah. Well, he was a second off. He wrote, I wrote this down in my notes and we've spoken about it a little bit, but Mark Marquez, is, he's a new rider this year, as in he's a patient Mark Marquez. There is no way two or three years ago that he would have just been, all right, I'll sit in seventh for no, half a race. No, he would have tried to end up first after the first corner. Correct. Yeah. And then he would have taken someone out or taken him. It would have crashed. Yeah. They always would have just ended up in a crash, but he's now done it again where he's gone from – P14 to, uh, what do you get, second or third, third in the main, in the main, race. main race. Yeah. Um, but what's going on, on in that soft rear tyre? What's going on in Quiddy's qualifying? I don't know. Maybe he just can't push the bike as he, uh, he normally can. He just seems like he's up there first part of qualifying and then like when the push comes to shove, just can't put the time on the bike. It seems like he comes undone when he's really trying to yeah. push. Yeah. Like something just happens and he mm. sort of thinks, you know what, I'll just – you know, make it work on the Saturday afternoon and mm. Sunday. Maybe those lower grip tracks don't help him as much as well because he just doesn't have the confidence in the bike. Like if you're Peko or Martin, like you know the bike inside That's out right. where he's still, you know, people people are already forgetting these like six races in on that bike. So mm. I guess it, it is a new patient Marquez and that's wild to see in a way, but he's just making those clutch moves and um, like he, he, you know, kept that soft rear tire the whole race and just had to, Pass when he passed, other people crashed in front of him, and you know that was really it. Mm. Robbed a leash of a home podium. <laughs> I know he did. And he said sorry. He said yeah. sorry. <laughs> I actually, oh, well, that was quite funny. Yeah, in race. Sorry, but I had to do it. <laughs> but yeah, amazing how uh, those celebrations for the sprint race with the leash—they were pretty cool. Yeah, like yeah, I was awesome paralytic stuff. at the end of that because <laughs> I was at the footy all day, so I had to watch it on a replay because I don't remember a thing. But um, it was—I uh, thought you were going to throw your hamburger on me because you were standing behind me yelling. <laughs> At the TV, and I thought the hamburger was going to land on my head because I was sitting down. <laughs> Cheese, cheeseburger shab. <laughs> yeah, hey, Uber eats like six Big Macs. Yeah. Felt sorry for one of those oh. Big Macs. <laughs> Got inhaled. But um, yeah, it's um, yeah, Lace retiring now. It opens up a seat as well for the Aprilia. Yeah, and I think Bastion need him. It's a perfect spot for him. So that's, is that's that, I think so. Is that the play? That's a done boys? deal. That's a done deal. Oh, I think that's it. I yep. think the, what they've alluded to yeah. at Aprilia and oh, he's still too good not to have a factory ride. For sure. You know, and yep. anyone who says any different, go educate yourself. What's his riding style like? Is he's he smooth? Pushed, he's, uh, yeah, I think he's, he's just pretty smooth, smooth on the throttle. He just pushes really. Yeah. He somehow pushes really hard, but he's mm. smooth in the same sense. Yeah, it's weird. Um, very aggressive when it comes to the nitty gritty, though. And if he has yeah. to fight, he'll fight hard. So mm. it's I'm, almost like he's got good race craft. It's just it, sometimes it can just come on too late, where he's just got too much grip too late. One hundred percent. You know. So maybe this this change of environment, if there is one for him, will be fantastic because then he can rub shoulders with with everyone else and yeah. and show him show them what we all seen yeah. a couple of years back when he was at Grassini. Yeah. Well, hopefully he can help the ultimate fraud. Maverick Vinales. Oh, I was going to bring him up. Oh, what? Okay, yeah. Then I we had, had him few, tipped. I know, you Me, both did. And I was like, nah, Maverick's going to come out. He's going to do the double. I thought he's going to pump it this weekend. <laughs> he, he, we got so many comments saying he's just blue-balled at all you yeah, guys. Yeah, he did. He, he did. did. He did. It was I think he's call. pulling into pit lane now. <laughs> he just finished the race. What's the go? Do you If, if you're if you're Massimo Rivola, are, are, you, are you signing him. on Maverick Vinales? No, flick him. Get two riders, man. I just, I, I, you're right. I, I would not sign Maverick Vinales again. Yeah, he's had enough time on much, that bike. Correct. There's too much talent out there for that guy to be on that bike pulling mm. that result. At race, his home race. Race winner, though. Race winner this year. Yeah, but yeah, Jack but Miller's on, a man. race winner. No, not this year. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? You crash on the first corner. Miller, it's Miller. Didn't even, yeah. even have to look at the... Yeah. yeah didn't yeah, have to no, look at... You're like, oh, Miller. It came to you in the sand trap. And then it's been there about six laps later. <laughs> but going back, Sorry, yeah, going go back, back to Maverick, like... There's so much more talent out there that you can get. A hundred percent, man. Pick someone up from Moto Two. You can pick someone up from Moto Two. Uh, not no, no. not straight to a factory bike. I don't know about that. Yeah, like it is hard. Who do you pick though? Give it, give it, give, chuck a name out there. 
to take the factory Aprilia yeah. seat. Like what Oliveira. You know, I'll put, I'd, I'd rather Vinales. No, I wouldn't put Oliveira on. I'd he's, rather he's, he's broke my heart too many times <laughs> this year. I'd still rather Vinales and Raul Fernandez. I would rather a Juan Me. Oh, that's a great shout. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would take that because that bike would suit him to a T. Yeah, yeah. And he wants out of that Repsol Honda. I could almost yeah. even throw the I'd throw the money at Alex Rins. Yeah, like Alex. as in not big money, but yeah. as in I'd try and get it, sorry get him across from Yamaha. Yeah, for sure. I think There's, either one of those guys would suit that. But Mia more so. That's yeah. a really good shout. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. That's someone who could definitely take it. Like, is Maverick. Like, and I said this. I remember saying this at Coda. Like, this is what he does. He drags you in week in, one race. He just did it nice and early in the season. <laughs> and then, yeah, we didn't have to wait as long. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The thing is, as well, and he dropped like a fly in Catalonia oh, as well. This is the thing. Like, Alicia Spargo performed, won the sprint race. Yeah. And Raul Fernandez was up there, so the bike's yeah. under him. And the bike's bike, under him. We all know the yeah. bike is under him. He's just, Miguel he's, finished he's in front in of his him. own head. Yeah, Miguel, chef, so, step sister. Yeah, so it's just I don't yeah. know. It, it, it must be low grip tracks. But he, he was finished. But the Aprilia should. He did a mate. They did one and two last there. year. Exactly right. It's not like it's. It's just this is, is why it, it doesn't make sense. Because it was colder conditions though last year. Possibly. Nah, come on, man. I'm, I'm 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 going in the battle now for Maverick after putting him over the <laughs> yeah. coals. I'm going in the battle, Mav. <laughs> You're right, buddy. He entices you, Mav. Ah, oh, it's if I'm Massimo Rival, I'll just be I'll be sick of it. You'd want an overhaul. You'd have to. Take him to Superbikes. Get him out. Park, we're harsh, but fair. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It's that's good. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But you know what? That Aprilia seat is now too good to have it an average rider on there. It's too good to even just win one race. Yeah. You have to be better than a one race winner for a season. I mm. think you'd almost have to try and build a super team in that bike, in that team. Yeah. Like if you're going to get Bastianini across, try and get Bezzecchi across, try and get Mir across. Yeah. Like I try think and build a super team that's going to – because Marquez or Martin's going to go to factory Ducati. It's done, right? So yeah. you've got to compete yeah. with both of those yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm telling you, to get Mir across, all you have to do is give him a nice warm hug and a shoulder to cry on, and he'll, <laughs> and he'll go to sign. that bike. He'll sign. Then they have to pay him. <laughs> I don't know. I think he's mentally fucked. I, I was, really do. I was just about to say, I actually feel really... I love Like, Mir. he's talking yeah. retirement. He's talking leaving contracts, <laughs> yeah. like, all this stuff. Like, it just... You can't just jump on a factory bike expect him to perform either. And he did say... And this is one thing I don't think anyone's spoken about and either of us is, like, my body is just mentally beaten up. Like, all those crashes he's taken... Over the weekend, yes, every a, weekend, he had a rough run after his championship year. Yeah, that's right. And then like on the Honda, like he's just taking a beating. So, I mean, um, like Acosta crashed and still passed all the Hondas. And I know that was in my and notes. finished in the points. I know that's just like, horrible, it's crazy. man. That's depressing. You can't be having oh, that. from from a rookie. And Mir and Nakagami were fighting for like what eighteenth <laughs> place, <laughs> and Nakagami still held the position. And like, they almost took each other out. Oh, as they well. did. Yeah, like. It's not a good spot to be in. I don't think that Repsol, any Honda. Any Honda. I, what do they do? Stefan, Stefan Brado was racing. I didn't even realise he was racing. Oh, he was stone He was stone last. You if know. he beat him, then that would have been a fuck. That would have been a good story. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, like, he's just got to... Yeah. They just got to... I don't know. They just got to do something, though. Uh, I wish Who knows? I knew. It's, well, maybe 2027, these new regs. This is where they probably have to aim at. It's going to be a hard couple of years. I think that's what they're going to go for. Yeah. Hard couple of years. Work on this 850cc engine and, and hopefully you... Throw a ton of money at it, which Honda will. They're course, too proud. Always, they're too always. proud. Mm. You, know. you know what, though? When they came out of the 800s, um, going back to 07, that 800 out of the box wasn't great because that was the year Nicky was defending the title and that bike was... A bucket of bolts. It was actually. Yeah, yeah. it was. But no so good. was everything was really except for the Ducati. Yeah, the Ducati 07, was great. 07, 07, yeah. yeah. Even the Yamaha was a bit yeah. of a box as well. And the Ducati just to be fair was just all down to Casey at the same time. Like he of was course. amazing and Marco Melangi was nowhere and it just yeah, had amazing right. he, top end speed. And he could handle it. And he could handle it. And everyone knows Casey's talent. But mm. um so that's one thing there. So like okay, Honda when we when we, they went to the uh MotoGP era, the thousands knocked it out of the park. But yes, the, the, then they only they did nothing on the eight hundred, you know. So anyway, it'll be interesting. So it's not like they get it right every time either. True. 
I yeah. think um, Yamaha's got yeah. something coming up in Mugello as well, yeah. I reckon. So it'll be interesting to see what they bring. Yeah, and they went testing a couple of weeks ago at Mugello. Yep. Yeah, I think they tested, I don't know exactly what, but they, a few new things. I think a few new uh, aero, so. Yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah. Honda, world of hope. Like when you're getting, when you're crashing, when Pedro Acosta's crashing, he's still a rookie and then passing Remounting the hole. And going, it's his yeah. sixth race or seventh race. <laughs> it is. It's he's crazy. still learning the bike. <laughs> You know, it was crazy watching, um, I think, Acosta and Bagnaia having a little biff at the start. Mm. Like, Bagnaia's breaking later than Acosta, and then Acosta's running wide. Like, it's amazing how I'm a crazy I noticed, good Bagnaia I noticed is. that. Bagnaia on, on the, the brakes, brakes like, this weekend damn. was incredible. No the aerial so shot, the yeah. aerial shot of just Bagnaia breaking just those few meters later, or even early, like sometimes it's earlier, but still, it's, yeah, incredible. it's incredible. It's incredible. It was amazing to see. And he's just—he just must be so hard to pass. Like, it's just incredible. Like, I think Martin sort of half surprised him in that mm. corner, uh, and then chucked it up the inside. But yeah, I mean, there's no other, there's no other way around. There's yeah. no like that first t- turn. Yeah, he's he's late. No one, around. no, yeah, no one, one was, was getting close. past him. Yeah. yeah, he was incredible on that right hander. You have to just be, just lick the stamp and send it to get exactly, past yeah. Banyaya. And to be able to nurse the ties still to some extent. Yeah. You know, yeah. whilst doing that. Jury's out for me on Catalonia, though. I don't think it's had great races, but I don't think the average race is amazing at, at Barcelona for yeah. MotoGP. I think it's still a better track than, than a Le Mans, though. I enjoyed it more. Oh, I don't agree with that. I think Le Mans Le for racing, better for racing. racing. For racing. Yeah, I reckon Le Mans does better nah, racing. Le Mans, there's just nowhere to pass. Like, it was just, it was a frustrating race to, for me. If you were I don't know. It could be a track that like, could be... Great the track, calendar. like amazing circuit, I'm saying, but like every passing spot on that track is just a massive risk. Yeah, you're right, but at least they pass. Like I don't think... I don't know. Some, I think it's just because it's such low grip at Catalonia. Maybe they need to resurface it or something. I don't know, but... Maybe. Yeah, they said like the, the it's actual tarmac is sort of... It's really fine stones. Yeah. Um, where a lot of the other tracks are like a thicker stone. And yeah. Like, so, yeah, it's just interesting. Because it's just all about tyres that whole weekend. It's, but it was awesome in Moto2, wasn't it? Like, yeah, oh, Moto2 was like incredible. Them, I love when tyres go off the cliff. It's the best thing to see. Yeah, that's Who went true. off the cliff on Moto2? There was someone terribly went. Um, Who was it? Oh, he was going. It was like four seconds a lap slower or something. Uh, Binder did for MotoGP for a few He did, yeah. For yeah. a few laps. And then yeah. some, uh, Furman Aldegare. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he crashed, didn't he? Yep. Was it Eldegare? No, Alonso Lopez. Alonso Lopez. He yes. ran into a lot of yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. And it was like shaking his head, getting <laughs> mad. Anyway, we'll talk about it when we get to the matter too. It was so crazy. Um, you know what I liked? I liked the Spanish national anthem on the piano at the start of the... That was cool. Yeah, I liked it. I was, was a good. fan. Yeah, something a bit different. Spanish aren't as uh, patriotic as the French, though. No one really cared in the stands. They didn't, did they? <laughs> they it's like with the Australian racing. national anthem. Like, no one cares anymore. <laughs> nah, buddy Jeffrey doesn't get up from his no, camp chair. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe to get his 4X gold, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> or his Jim Beam. <laughs> um, Marini shut down rumours of Repsol Honda leaving. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's he's good. come yeah. out and said... He's staying. Yeah, it's, it's all... It's all um, uh, basically, in his words, bullshit. Okay. Um, well, we take it back then, because I was I jumped I I jumped on him last week. Yeah. Like, it's yeah, absolutely ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah, he actually singled out you from Motorsport, Tom from Motorsport <laughs> Republic. Ah, I saw what you said. Yeah, I, yeah, good, good, good. Made that assumption, bloody hell. Um, so no, he says he's fully committed into Repsol Honda, which is good. That's great. Oh, they, That's the marketing team would have gotten his back to say that. Under <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Next week he comes out. Nah, yeah. I'm out. I'm yeah. out. I'm done. I'm going, going to be a help Prelira or something. <laughs> Get him on. Mm. So, it's, yeah. Oh, that would be like if he waited one more year and then a Prelira spot opened up, that would have been perfect for Marini. Perfect. Mm. But, yeah, he's dug it. And as I said last week, he's made his bed. He has to sleep in it now. He, he, just, made, he made that decision. Yeah, the bike. But if he can get that bike good next year... You know, but he looks like a bit of a hero there. Bro, it's God, it's a long way away from being a good bike. It's not they're not gonna flip a switch on that thing. It's not gonna, they're not I'm telling you, Honda will not do anything until the new regs. Yeah, it's gonna be three one? fucking hard years for them. Hundred percent. Yeah, I'm with you. They just can't you just with MotoGP you've seen it over the oh, years, no. you can't just flip a yeah, switch. You, you have can't. to develop the bike over yeah. years and years and years. Look how long it took Ducati. In Formula One, McLaren can bring an upgrade and go from the back of the grid to mid pack and then bring another upgrade and go to the Go in podium spot last yeah. like last year. Yeah, can't do that in GP. No, you no, can't. you can't. No, a Honda's biggest mess up was getting rid of Danny Pedrosa. Should never yeah. have let him slip through 
as their test yeah. rider. That's arrogant. That's typical Honda arrogance, though, for you, that, I reckon. That cooked them. Yeah. And then trying out, like, they went to... Uh, who made the chassis there for a couple of rounds? Like, they went to, like, a... They went to a Calyx Calyx swing chassis. Arm. Yeah. Sh- uh, chassis. Swing arm. Swing oh, arm. Maybe a chassis as well, actually. Yeah. They didn't race with the chassis, I don't think, but, like, they, yeah. um, they were developing with, like, just... I don't know what Getting all doing. these externals yeah, in. Yeah, just figure it out. I mean, you got all these little smart Japanese guys there. Just work it out. You know how to win a championship. And they had Danny and they also had Casey yep. as a test rider. Like, it's such a two ridiculously <laughs> yeah, fast who else world champions. Want? Like, who else do you want? Yeah. Honda arrogance, that's the problem. Pedros is just such a – he's such a clean rider and he's just – he would be able to develop the bike so well. I mean, and he's been around and do, forever. And do lap after lap after lap. Has He doesn't have a unique riding style. It's probably like... It's little, pretty normal. Pretty normal. Yeah. So like he'd just be a perfect test rider. Mm. Perfect. Yeah. And he's done a lot for that KDM. Oh, um, absolutely. As it stands though now, boys, I know we don't want to talk about it too much, but who are we choosing? Are we choosing Martin or are we choosing Marquez? What, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen, Daniel? Because we haven't spoken to you much about it. I think Martin... Will be Peko's teammate. Yeah, you can't, you can't deny the bloke a factory seat. I know, Come like on. he's doing everything he can possibly do. Oh, yeah. Martin, I yeah. don't, I don't see why not. I reckon he's. I can't see Marquez on that bike, and I'm not saying that because I'm not his biggest fan or whatever. I just really don't think it'll happen. I think he'll get a 24 or 25 spec bike, mm. but it's not going to be in red. Mm. Mm, you and Danby on the same opinion there. Wow. First. You know what? I read it somewhere as well. Why, why throw so much money at him when his sponsors can just pay, pay him? He's got that much money that he'll get from Red Bull, Showy, Repsol if they still sponsor him personally, mm. whatever. All those beer sponsorships and all that kind of stuff. Just so you can go, just so you can just dress in red. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm. Yeah, yeah. like mm. they'll pay for his thing, and Grissini can give him less. I don't it's know less it's expenditure for Ducati. So you're going towards my pick for the 2025. Staying at Christine. Staying at Christine. No, no. What I'm saying is like Pramac or whoever he yeah, goes yeah. with on a 25 bike, they don't have to pay him as much and then they can redirect that cash flow elsewhere. Yeah. Whether it's into drawing more sponsors or, you know, getting another rider on board or whatever. Mm. It's a good point. It's a really just, good point. Yeah. But strong links... Reading and doing a little bit of research, strong links with Martin and KDM. Yeah, they said it's... So to go it's, back, yeah, I know. It's it's looking pretty favourable. Bro, Elder Gear will be on that factory to Ducati. <laughs> like, seriously. But, like, More I, Bedelli will fall off. <laughs> oh, bro. Oh. I'll fucking quit the podcast that happens. Oh, fucking God, all right? Oh, I'm going to ring... I'm gonna Curtis, ring you're in, mate, all right? <laughs> fucking hell. I'll ring Delinia now. Make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, if he still has a Ducati under here next year, I'll crack the shit. <laughs> god. He will. He, he 100%. Still he better will. than Bezeki this year. I oh, know. Oh, dude. <laughs> Digi is smashing him. Where did Digi come from last night? Bro, out, of the clouds. I know, out of the He's clouds, been dude. racing so well. Underrated. Yes. Underrated this year. And so I've got underrated. I've got to admit, and I, I will cop this one on the chin, I'll. I did say to Bandana Man that he's tripping and Bezeki's going to wipe the floor with yeah. Digia. So, Mark, this is the only nice thing I'll say to you this episode anyway. <laughs> it's well done. You you proved me wrong. And he did say Digia's going to... It's still a long season. You never know what happens. It is, it is. But <laughs> so far, he's um he's making him look second rate. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. And good on Digia, you know. he's He went through a lot, of, through a hell, lot, of, a lot of crap last last um yeah. season and then proved his proved himself at the end and now he's him and it, it's really him and Marquez are the only ones making that 23 bike doing something underneath them so you know no 100 percent yeah, yeah. Credit where credit's due. he's having a great season yeah yeah and underrated not enough people talking about him I'm telling you mm. good dude we'll get him on the pod down yeah. here Philip yeah yeah get yeah him going if we can fit him in <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's 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 such a tough thing I mean everyone's throwing rooms around about everything and Everyone's throwing their two cents in. I'm just an armchair expert. And, oh, we all are, mate. You know, I I personally think it's going to be Martin. You can't look past him. I understand what Mark's done for the sport and done in the sport, but he is he's riding amazing. Marquez on that 23, um, amazing. But I wonder if Jorge he's 
a bit fed up with not just being picked and that's why he's ex- obviously he's exploring his options with KDM and thinking, well, do these guys really just value me or am I just a number of numbers to them? Where KDM is going to be like, we're family, we'll give you the money, everything's going to be about Jorge Martin. Keeps his Red Bull sponsorship. Keeps his Red Bull sponsorship. It massages his ego. We've got the bike here for you. You know, that's questionable, but that's what obviously they're going to be saying. Mm. Um, and that's going to be a big thing as well. Because he comes from that very family-oriented team with Pramac. Of course. It's a formidable lineup. I would love to see Martin. Acosta and Martin on the I same team. I would love and to see Binder that. And then and Binder and probably, a, I don't know, maybe a Miller on the gas gas. Like, it's a great four, four riders. Yeah, it is. Like, I know Miller's obviously having a real struggle, but he's still he's still a class class act. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Maybe like they are going. They have to all go on hard, hard, like hard front, hard soft for a race, and he might last to the Imagine end. Imagine if he goes on like hard, hard, and just like wipes the floor for everyone by twenty seconds. <laughs> Bro, could be Jack. I was waiting for him to put the soft rear on, I'm like on the grid. I'm like, he's gonna put it on. I bet you he's gonna take the risk. <laughs> nah, sorry anyway. guys, didn't work out again. <laughs> but uh, you know what? Talk about tire. You know how you say it never works. It worked for Mark Marquez. Yeah, he probably would have finished third anyway, though. But yeah, yeah. Well, if anyone's going to make it work, it's probably going to be. Him, I just don't so. know why they do that. I don't know why they take the risk and put softs on. I know. Like I'll, it doesn't make sense. I know. Well, when they said Marquez was going to do it, I was like, God, oh, there I goes know. the race. Yeah. Like he's going to either crash or just burn up his tires. And I was but really he did, surprised. He did that at Phillip Island. Remember when he finished third, yeah. second, second or third? Yeah. Then Martin did it and got caught at the end and I two think, different mm, people but yeah. Marquez is just uh, if you love him or hate him he's just incredible he's so incredible talent talented writer like do you like his yeah, dancing on the I'm a fan of the dancing I love it yeah I don't mind it seriously wouldn't see Rossi doing that but <laughs> jumping no, in right, toilets and pools and shit because he's got a he's got a freaking brain that's why <laughs> what a chuch <laughs> seriously Strega, you mean? what a chuch <laughs> dancing like that what does he think he's in a game of Fortnite? seriously what a tard How's oh the wags, by the way? God, there's some good-looking wags yeah, around the paddock. Yeah, it's, it's really um, become like evident in Bro, MotoGP this year. They MotoGP keep panning to them. And F1 as I well. I know, they kept panning to them as well. And they well. all look exactly the same. They do. They're all like they do. Spanish, skinny, little like chicks. <laughs> <laughs> Petite, sorry. Little always sounds a bit weird. Petite. Um, and just hot, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Smoking. Yeah. Yeah, they're, um, they're not But it's, it's that thing now. It's social media, isn't it? Well, if you're Mark Marquez and, you know, you've got... 60 mil on the bank. You ain't getting you ain't getting Gloria from buddy Frankston. Back as Marsh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the thing is like You're I getting think, Maria bro, from Buddy Madrid. Oh yeah. Charles Leclerc's uh girlfriend's like got millions of followers now just because she's Charles of Leclerc's course. girlfriend. Like, yeah, it's, it's just like an instant huge, thing. Huge, you know? Unreal. I was actually talking to my missus about that and um <laughs> they all look the same, but it's Piast- good for the chicks though. Piastri's nerdy and he's kind of got like yeah. a nerdy look and misses yeah. as well. Oh, yeah, does he? But yeah. then before, like, I like that because like they got together before he got famous, I suppose. Yeah. Always rich, but yeah, but he'll give yeah. it a flick soon. We want <laughs> he some already, probably already has some do couple Nathan, side pieces. Do a eighth line, you reckon? Oh yeah, true. <laughs> Come on, boys, you tell me you wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro. Happily married. We talking about. Yeah. No <laughs> when chance, Repu- bro. When Republic blows up, bro, I'm still gonna be with her. <laughs> Cut that one out, Kitty. <laughs> I hope the girls don't listen to this. <laughs> I'm sure they won't. <laughs> right, you are. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> You're in so much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> nah, worth it, but no roll. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to it, it is interesting. I didn't notice it. I have noticed it, though. There's so I much more. I noticed it last mission. night, like, I, what, you were watching the F1. So yeah, like, it was just, Bro, there was more footage of those chicks than, like, than the ro- drivers. Drivers, riders. or, like, or even, like, famous people. Mm. It was all, the, like, the wag, so. Um, getting, steering a shit back to uh, MotoGP, what's the percentage of you boys think of Martin going to Ducati or <laughs> KDM? <laughs> Because I reckon it's 50-50 at the moment. Nah. I reckon it's that close. It'll be 80-20. You reckon that much? Yeah. What do you think, Tom? Yeah, I think I, I still see. It's just a, it's just this, like the normal option. Like mm. Martin, factory Ducati, Marquez stays on a Grassini. They gave him a factory bike. So one factory bike to Grassini, one factory bike to VR. Mm. And then Primark goes to Yamaha. Oh. Mm. It that seems one. like that's what I reckon is going to happen, but we'll see. There's a lot to happen. Yeah. I think the Primark Yamaha things will 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 probably 
affect what happens there because they've got to fill Al- Aldegare in there. I reckon. Well, then uh, Aldegare will probably take Alex Marquez's spot. Yeah, good call. Yep, great call. That would make the most sense. Yeah. Yep. But then who takes who takes the other VR spot? De Gia stays. Oh, of course. Of course. And then... And um, then Beziki gets the factory bike. Yeah, or ends up in a, at a different manufacturer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I rec- I that seems it. the most viable option. Or Digia gets the factory bike and Morbidelli comes across as a last lifeline. <laughs> no, it's, it's serious. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, no, you're right. Bezeki ends up at, might end up at Aprilia as well. Mm. I reckon Primac staying at Ducati. I think so. I thought they shut it down. Yeah. I thought they said it's not happening. I reckon Primac Ooh. wants to stay because they know they can score a Marquez as well. Because if they keep Martin and Ducati, then Marquez just gets a factory bike and boom. Yeah, but this is what we have to look back at, guys. Like, he had that opportunity. Yeah, but he didn't know. I don't know. He had an opportunity. He was keeping his options open. Yeah. So he had a two-year contract with Primac with a factory bike. Yeah. And he turned it down. Yeah. So that tells me he wants a factory, factory, full factory ride. Who knows? And who knows what the difference is? Like, is the fucking... uh, Is the... I don't know. Is the travel better? Is that they spend more money on hotels? Do they treat you better? Like, what's the? I difference? think he's got enough money to not worry about that. Yeah, I, that's I, right. Is it the corporate prestige? And, and remember, his mindset's I reckon changed after these six races than what it was six rounds ago. Has he both your opinions, not percentage, but your opinions? Uh, has he outshine? Like, is he better than what you thought he was going to be? Uh, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. probably about on par. Yep. He hasn't, like, I thought he probably would have won a race by now. Yeah, I'm the same. I thought he would have won already. Yeah, like, I had him true. for the championship as well. Yeah, so. true. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I think the 25 bike has has taken a leap forward, though. I think, sounds of it. Yeah, I, it looks like it has. Yep. Definitely, I think, with um, Martin and Peko. But I guess it's probably taught Marquez again to be more patient. And that's probably what's, I think, what you have to be like these days. You can't just be crash and bash. Yeah, to win a title. What about, like, question for both of you again. What's What was tyre wear like back 10 years ago? Was it as big a factor as it is now? I don't nah, think it was. I don't think close. it was. Yeah. Because that's the other thing. Like, you've got to look at, like, the Rossi era and that and where Marquez started from. I don't remember anyone running out of tyres or kind no, of... Very the, rarely. The difference was, like, six, seven years ago, just say when Marquez burst onto the scene and was winning titles, is they would... S- the race pace would be a second or two slower for the first 15 to 18 laps. Mm. So then then when they – but you could follow each other because there was no aero. So then you're not overheating front tyres. And then they could they could, they could could punch out a faster slap three laps to go yeah. and they'll be going full ham because they, they would conserve their tyres and then follow each other and then, you know. So there, there still was tyres, but they weren't – it wasn't so bored in the question now because of the aero. Yeah, definitely. I think aero is aero as well. I mean, there's more downforce on the bikes, therefore, um, probably more tire wear. Yeah, as correct. Well. Yeah, everything just leads back to aero and all our conversations. <laughs> I reckon. <laughs> and the Somehow size, the size of the bikes, this yeah. is huge now. Like you see them on that track. Like I don't know how they made it through the first corner. Yeah, and they did both races. I know, which uh, is uh, very unusual. As as our great friend Chris Chris Vermeulen said, was it Chris? Yep. Um, always big things happen when the chicane in the first corner. Yeah, very true. Cre- creates a creates a bit of an angst in the paddock. Mm. So, good point. Mm. Uh, we were talking before, Daniel Alex Marquez. What do you reckon is going to happen yeah, with him? I don't know. It's a bit um, very underwhelming, to be honest. Yeah. I was sort of expecting a lot more from him. I thought he was going to be doing sort of what Digi is doing. Yeah, you know, being up around that bit of a safe fraud, fraud watch. You reckon? I wouldn't say. F- Fraud watch. What have really? we got him in the power no... rankings this week? Uh, what did I put him in? There's uh, no real like, I was tossing pressure. up with him. He's close, I reckon, Jim. He was the hardest one. He's not fraud watch because he because there's he's... no like thing on him. There's no like pressure on him, I guess. Yeah, like maybe that's a problem. Uh, mm. I, I put him in his needs to lift, and he's the only. Oh, one yeah, in that, that, that's, that's, that's probably a, fair enough. That's fair yeah. enough. But like he is probably performing where Digio was last year, and then the last what six seven races after the oh he's doing definitely doing better than what Digio was doing last year, and then Digio just went bang like as, yeah as soon as they applied some pressure said you're leaving like boom you got to find a seat. But you got to remember he had a couple of podiums early on as well. Yeah. Marquez last yeah, he year did. Yeah. he was doing really he well. He was he was going really really strong. So another year on the bike and like yeah just it just obviously doesn't suit him like Bez this year. Yeah, it just seems to be something with that twenty three for them that they can't um, work out, but. Hopefully he turns it around, to be honest. Yeah. 
It'll be interesting to see how he goes in the second half of the year. But so, do you reckon he's going to keep his seat? Well, no, I reckon mm, you're on the money. Maybe not. I would get a to Grassini. Yeah, yeah he'll I, probably find I himself at a satellite Yamaha yeah. or something if there is one. Or I don't see him staying on that on that Ducati. Just with what's he, what he's doing now. I think he's had his time. Yeah, it's not a, he's not an overly large draw card. That's no disrespect to him. No, it's you're just, right. Hundred percent. Just how it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's. It's an interesting one, that's for sure. I could see him at, at uh, another manufacturer. Just a bit of a hot mm. hake, a hot take from a Harry Hayru, a big uh, fan of ours, mm. uh, comment on YouTube just came through. I think Bastianini will go to Grassini with Mark Marquez, Alex Marquez to World Superbikes, and Jorge Martin to Aprilia. Reason being he's tired of the drama with the decision-making of his future and like the chokehold with Mark Marquez. The friendship with Martin and Alicia is too close for him not to per- be pers- persuaded to take the place. Persuaded, but it's not like you're racing with him. You're racing with Mav. Will Will Alicia stay on as a test rider? Probably. Maybe. You would think with so, some yeah. wild cards. Because he did say when he was retiring, he said, which we haven't even touched on, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> true. That he's just retiring as a full-time rider, but he will be wild card. You'd, ke- you sh- you'd be stupid to not. Yeah. Um, Keep him on. Yeah. He's done so much work for that bike and the that brand. That, yeah. the, the races, like, I mean, has he done 350 races or something? That's though? crazy. Like, it's pretty incredible. Ex- pretty experienced. Yeah, like, he's been a, a house, not a household name, but a name that you've been listening to for, I mean, as long as I can remember in the paddock. Oh, yeah. I know, but I feel like I only, he's been in there since the CRT days, but I reckon I didn't, didn't hear his name until like 2018, 2019. <laughs> you know maybe, what I mean? maybe when he went to Factory Suzuki, he got a bit of a shout out. That's about it. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting it was on Factory Suzuki. Remember he, um, I think he got pole or a top 10 on a CRT one year. He did an amazing ride. No mm. one knows how the hell he wow. did it. Wow, that is Didn't crazy. Yeah. The pole, I think you're right. Yeah, pole I'm position. pretty sure he got a pole position on like a, that's like an no, that's RSV4. His, that's his brother, bro. <laughs> 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 Working for freaking uh, Spanish reporting joint. Yeah. But I mean, what a journeyman. So oh, he's cr- actually, he's racing next week. Oh, is he? Isn't he? At Mugello? Is he? Who's he racing he, for? Doesn't he get a wild card? Yeah, for Gas Gas. Yeah, you're right. Actually, he is. Yeah, I think so. I'll take Daniel's word for it. Jack, he's just going to kick the Repsol on the bikes. This is like a <laughs> as an FU. Yeah, FU to him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, back to Alish. I mean, what a journey. I mean, he's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and we know he's um, he's been frustrating to watch the last few years. Yeah, he's my favorite moments. Him um, whacking Franco Morbidelli. Yeah, and whacking the bike. Remember back in the bike when he came in? Like, bloody hell, he's hot-headed. But Push his mechanics over. The best was when he <laughs> celebrated too early. Oh, oh yeah. two years ago. Fuck. And then came back and then won the year after. Like, that's, I mean, did he win the year after? He did, yeah. yeah. Did the double. Yeah. So, yeah, that was it. Yeah, he's had some crazy moments. But Mor- Morbidelli deserved it, but <laughs> nowhere, mate. Nowhere. Get him yeah. off. Get Vincent off. <laughs> Get Vincent off. <laughs> But he, he can look back and he can be pretty proud of what he's done. Oh, man, he's, what he's a career. A race winner now, yeah. multiple time race winner. And he's actually had some really good races the last yeah. last few years and a couple of really, really good battles. So Yeah, his, probably, gold, his golden era was like the past three years, yeah, really. Yeah, that's right. You know, probably got um, to a spot where he didn't think he might have ever gotten. So mm. Yeah. Well, I don't think many people thought that, yeah. to be honest. And it's testament to him for sticking with Aprilia. Yeah, developing that bike. Developing the bike yeah. and helping them... You know, move forward and put, and he's helped put him in a great spot. Yeah. So a championship winning spot, really. A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um. Yeah. He, credit he, he's still he convinced that be, bike is mint. Yeah, for sure. He must be really cluey of developing that bike because he would have had a massive, a massive. Of course. You know, and that's probably understated, really. Definitely. It's just he's so hot headed, and he's like the fittest person in that paddock. And he does like Iron Man, crazy he's, triathlons. Yeah, he's he's yeah. an animal. He's just skin and bone. Yeah, he? he's Far absolutely. Out. Have you seen his cycling tan lines? They're oh, yeah. full on. <laughs> yeah, like I remember Brian Starring uh, Pod Favorite was saying, "You know they're serious when they have the uh, like the straps and the glasses." Yeah. <laughs> and he had them as well. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> have you seen his garage? Um, yeah, yeah, That's yeah, insane. yeah. He's got his Porsche and all his leathers yeah, and bikes and in there. Yeah, a couple of bikes in there as well. That's a, that's he's, loaded. he's loaded. He's um, loaded. I'm a Spargo. Well, he's always it. been sponsored by that raw energy drink. It must be a big sponsorship deal. Yeah. He's always had that hat on because so as much like yeah. I can remember. Yeah, true. Those personal sponsors must be so important to those guys. Like, and imagine the ones that we don't see. Yeah. Here in Australia, that they all have over in Spain, yeah. Italy, like or whatever. Clothing ones or yeah, watches. Or, or, exactly. You know. Yeah. Um, telecom companies yep. and all that kind of stuff. They'll do. 
heaps of that kind of jazz. Yeah, yeah it's good, a good point. Good, good career. Yeah. Still going, obviously. Yeah. So we'll see him off in Philip Island. Yeah, that's it. Give him a wave. It's 100%. But it's good he's made the decision early in the season and then he can just enjoy it. Yeah, good on him for yeah. doing that. Yeah. And then it just frees up a seat. Yeah. Kick Maverick off and we're good. Yeah, get yeah, to I enjoy think his summer break as well. And yeah. has he freed up the seat for his mate? That's the thing. That's the big question. Is that a determining factor? And I think personally it is, but we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. So who goes so on that hot take from... Um, oh, Harry the, who? From Harry who? Harry who? And, and Bastianini and Mark Marquez at Grassini. So who's going to Factory Ducati? Uh, he hasn't said. <laughs> it's a lone. <laughs> this, yeah. is a, this is a lone bike. This one bike for Factory. Okay, uh, hear me out for this one. If Aldegare came out and won every race this year in Moto2, that'd be a conversation. It actually yeah, would. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, it, it would. would be a conversation. It would, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. Now we have a our world famous segment coming up, James. Yeah. MJ Trading Cards Performance of the Week. Who we got? Well, we went not left field, but just an <coughs> unreal performance. Senna Aegis. Yeah, good shout. Pod that. favorite. Pod fave. All round good guy. Yeah, all round good guy. And an amazing performance, finishing fifth in the race. Long lap penalty as well. Look like he had the pace. Yeah. Really, really, really impressive ride. And like a coming of age to a certain extent. I mean, yeah. really super impressive. Looked, looked like he's been there for years. And you know what? A, a low grip track always brings out the best riders. Great. Call. You look at that podium for MotoGP. You had uh, Marquez come from the clouds, Peko or Martin. Those low grip tracks. Yeah. The, the riders that can ride around something are uh, some of the best riders out there. It's like riding in the rain as well. Yeah, and I'm assuming that he would have spent some time at Catalonia in his yeah. junior career, of course, racing yeah. in some Spanish championships. Yeah. So he's come back to a place that's familiar, and. And performed, and it's super exciting. Absolutely, and to yeah. jump straight on that Moto Two bike. I mean, I know he's based, raced a Moto Two style of bike in the previous seasons. Done but, a couple of wild cards, yeah. But just super impressive. I mean, we know how hard that category is because yeah. it's so even throughout yeah. the whole field. So, yeah, I mean, big things to come for the, for for Senna. Yeah, yeah, awesome it was stuff. it was a brilliant, brilliant race for him. Good to see another uh, Aussie up there in the Moto Two category as well, doing really well. So. Yes. Good yeah, on you. And yeah. representing Kalex. And representing Team Republica as well. Yeah, yeah. Once he gets a podium, he'll be uh, throwing a Republica shirt over his leathers. <laughs> so that's the deal when you come on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go, he's, got his, he's got our top. He's got our top. <laughs> um, and just another thing as well, MJ Trading Cards, uh, MSR15, 15% off Beautiful. your first order as well. So jump on board their website, guys. Get Make it going. most of it. Yep. Moto2 results. Igura first. <sighs> Sergio Garcia second. Do I really have to say who's third? Uh, you can put whatever spin on it you want, Daniel. It's your podcast, mate. Uh, Jake Dixon. <laughs> Jeremy Alcoba, fourth. Senna Aegis, fifth. Unbelievable. Albert Arena, sixth. Marcos Ramirez, seventh. Alonso Lopez, eighth. Zonta van den Guberg, ninth. <laughs> Excellent pronunciation, Daniel. <laughs> Thank you. And Tony Avellino, tenth. Fraud watch. Oof. Big time fraud watch. Yeah. Jesus. He was about 18th at one stage, nowhere, Arbley. And I think he just went well because everyone else crashed in front of him as well. <laughs> Bit of that. <laughs> Couple <laughs> long laps. Um, good race, though. Amazing. Great race. Probably, I'm going to say this, I reckon it was the best Moto2 race I've ever seen. Wow, jeez. Moto2 has come alive, though. It really has. And the it's last a few years, ripper there's been championship. some ripper yeah. races. That's what? I reckon like five, six years ago, I didn't even watch it. No, like, I don't think no one did. It was a snooze uh, fest. Yeah. It was. It was boring. Yeah. When it was the Honda, it was boring. Yeah, yeah, you're Since right. Triumph took over, True. it's been unbelievable. Yep. And you still get those one-sided races last year with Eldegare leading, but I mean, that threw it up and it was just super exciting and like had a bit of everything as well. Yeah, yeah I thought, um, like, where do you start? I thought Garcia was going to run away with it. And I was thinking of you, Daniel, when, it was, um, when he was running away with it. And then obviously... Furman came up and then had that long lap long out of lap nowhere and, and then crashed in there. He didn't even get in there. Like yeah. just he, he was going in hot. You could see yeah. from a mile yeah. away. He was, he was backing that thing, in. that thing in. Yeah. Yeah. God, he was angry with himself. Disappointing. Yeah. You guys have been that on was. Sergio Garcia's bandwagon and I'm and I'm jumping on as well. Yeah. Oh, dude. Super get talent. On the train. He is yeah. a, a star. He was we we saw it from last year when he was a rookie. I don't know how everyone missed this. Yeah, it's hard no one's miss. talked about it. No one's talked, and this, they still this, don't. Yeah. He's leading the championship. Mm. This is why it's the number one uh, motorsport public, no, <laughs> number one motorsport podcast in, in the world. In the world, yeah. motorsport public are number one. Yeah. <laughs> we had a nice comment during the week from one of our fans. I didn't got it up, but um, he said he's, he was sick of listening to English and American talking Americans talking about motorsport. Oh, he's jumped oh, yeah, on our yeah, pod, loving it. Uh, good on him. I'll get his name later in the in the pod. But yeah, it was a. 
I thought it's when Sergio hit the lead and, and Furman crashed. Thought, oh, mint. Yeah, he'll take the take the bull by the horns, run with it. Ran into a bit of tire trouble, and man, I tell you what, though, Ayagura. Yeah, didn't he do it? Hats good. off. Yeah. What an absolute race. Heading for MotoGP, was. Daniel? He, come on, he's got to take that spot. I think w- one of you boys mentioned that if he doesn't take it, that's, that's fact it. Now. HRC's. That, yeah, going to can it. Gonna Th- can that him. was breaking news, Republic, last week, yeah. but it's fact. It's come out during the week. So, so, yeah, brilliant race. I thought he did super well, and especially to come back from what he came off last year. Yeah. Uh, injury and fitness troubles. So. And what a smart move moving to that Bosca Scura. I don't know if he if he planned that because those those bikes are the obviously like Kalex has been the man for so yeah. long and now it's those Bosca Scuros. The thing is they're winning the constructors. Yeah. How many yeah. bikes are in the field for a Bosca Scura? I, I know it's, I know there's four. Um and they've I think they've gone one, two, two rounds in a row. I think it's only four. And, yeah, I think MT Helmets has gone one, two, yeah, three. Yeah, they went one, two. Yeah, the last two yeah. rounds in a row. Yeah. Yep. So they're um they're on a charge. <laughs> and I Guru is now back in a championship. Like he's a championship mm. contender again. Yeah, Joe Roberts had a bit of a stinker. Where was he? He f- ended up finishing eleventh. Okay. Um, but he had some decent late yeah, pace. He did. And then I think he copped a long lap. A lot he of people did. copped a long lap. Um otherwise he was floating in that mid pack there. So still an interesting <coughs> championship. So it is, it's wide open. Wide open. Which is really cool. And you to expect see. Eldegare to come from the clouds to a certain extent. What's like going on with Eldegare though? Like this is the man. He's meant to be the dude. I don't know. I think they jumped on him too quick. I'm gonna say. I, I I agree. Yeah. I think so. And we mentioned it a Oof. couple weeks ago. Again, Republic are breaking more stories. That's what we've been saying the whole time. Jump on me back, boys. Seriously. <laughs> Alonso Lopez did the exact same thing. He did. You know. So yeah. maybe it's a um, it's a Bosco Scuro curse. Yeah, 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 maybe. But, um, uh, that's now that's breaking news right there. <laughs> wow. But uh, all jokes aside, yeah, he's he's not living up to that hype, is he? No, he's not. Like he can't be crashing going into a long lap. He's not dominating like Acosta was. God or, no. Yeah, like is isn't it's not the same. Like yeah, he had what five six races in a row that he won, but and yeah. now the pressure is going to be mounting. So now you got like mentally, he's going to be a different well, man. Well, that's where so. the cream. Rises to the top, doesn't it? It definitely and he, does. It actually should be now. He's 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 at these tracks that he's used to riding at. He would have rode them in his junior career. Yeah, he would have done and thousands laps around yeah. Barcelona. And um, and yeah. So I mean, there's no excuse. There's no excuse. Mm. No I, excuse. I mean, unless there's a is there a fundamental slight issue or up or they need to upgrade this Kalix, Kalix chassis. Is so that five times fast? Yeah, I don't know what what it is, but. The Calyx, he's not on Calyx anyway. Yeah, he's on a Bosco Oh, Scuro. sorry. Oh, well, that's no excuse at all then. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what am I even saying? Mm. I'm just trying to get Leave that one out, Curtis. Sorry about that. Jesus. He's Standards. on the number one. He's, he's on, on the main bike. That, that and the MT Helmets bike. With oh, Sergio okay. Garcia. Well, there's, there's yeah. There's I mean, so much to go. He's 63 points down, though. That's a long... You know, they don't have sprint races, Oh, obviously. no, 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 no. Sorry. He's on oh. 63 points. Oh. He's 40... That's still a lot. 46. 46 points down. Mm. That's a lot of points, man. That's almost two race wins he has to really get. And hope Garcia throws it down the road. Yeah. And he's got Agura who, like, yeah, you can... He's, the piece he's, out of him, but it, geez, he's yeah, right. he's a sneak, he's a he's, sneaky one for the title until it gets to the last round. Yeah, and crash then, obviously, but yeah, <laughs> try to overtake it in the worst spot. It's the it's pain. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't, didn't even need to over. I'll never forget that. He didn't even need to overtake. That was. I think everyone would have thought the same thing as soon as they seen him break that a little bit later than Arbelino. Like, I know. What are you, what are you what doing? doing? Like, just like, stay on the bike at the points. Far out. That was cra- that was probably the craziest moment. It like, was the biggest choke I've ever seen. Yeah, it is. Um. That was that was incredible. Yeah, I reckon every night at about ten o'clock, his head hits something and goes, "Fuck!" <laughs> what I did? Why I did I just fucking break, break a little bit early? Just take the points. One hundred percent. Because I think about that every time I close my eyes. Imagine him. <laughs> <laughs> it freaks me. Career out. defining. Oh man. Career defining. But yeah, it's still close. Like Joe Roberts is ninety points. So it's it's close-ish. Mm. Is he going? So is he going up the Honda? Is that what he wants to do? Does he want to go to Yamaha? Who's this? Agura. Like, if I'm him, if I'm him, I, I don't. I, I, if I had any other offer on that MotoGP table, which I don't know, I don't know if he would get it. Probably. I not. don't think he's good enough to have a real offer from a genuine. I yeah, don't think I, so. I, he's only I getting that Honda spot because of the um, Japanese yeah, connection, isn't thing. he? So, yeah, I don't think he's got a choice. I just be. I want. I would love to know what he's thinking. You'll never get a real answer out of him, but I'd love to know what he's thinking, as in. Like oh okay I gotta I gotta take my opportunity but I know like 
It's, like, it's almost a career killer. I know. That's it's, it is. That bike's a career killer. He goes onto the, the Honda, does absolutely nothing for three years and then just gets dumped. Like, that's it. You're gone. Yeah. Yeah, or, right. uh, until another Japanese rider goes up there, which could be Tatsuki another. Tatsuki Suzuki. <laughs> uh, Yumi Sasaki. It could be another few years. Yeah. And he's probably looking at it like, no, thanks. But yeah, exactly. You yeah. Know? They need to be, a Japanese rider needs to be fast enough where they can just get an offer from like a Ducati or a Pilia or a Yamaha. Like that's what they got to do. Oh, I think Honda, they're in a world of hurt right now. They've got to do more than just put a guy on the bike they, because he's getting, they're getting money from a sponsor. Yeah, they, exactly right. They, they, they got to go, do that. Let's, let's, let's do this properly, get four ripper riders yeah. and do it and, and win a championship. Not, yeah. oh, I think we get sponsored by Itsumitsu. <laughs> but that's the thing. You Probably can't even get four ripper yeah, riders you anymore. Get, You're, right. Like they're looking at, and no offense to Jack Miller, but he's not a championship contender and like, he might be signing a Repsol but, but Honda. Even though, or, even, and, and like a Miguel Oliveira. But even Maverick now. Yeah, that's right. Even Maverick. Like they're not going to win your titles. Like they, you, you're getting big pat <laughs> riders. I mean, like the four rejects in one team. <laughs> Yeah, oh my god, gonna... that'd be so funny. <laughs> that'd be the funniest thing ever. I still wear Bro, my would, if, they, if they come with a championship, if they want to come with a championship, they would write a documentary about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, you got Dylan, Crivier, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rusty, Hayden, Stoner, Marquez, Stoner, Marquez Miguel Oliveira. <laughs> one out. Oliveira, Mira, uh, Mira, <laughs> Mira, Batmav. He's a big fraud central. <laughs> that is fraud central. Oh they lose all their sponsors. Repsol surely. Honda would go straight away. It'd be, it'd be a shame. Oh, yeah, right. they might, you might get OnlyFans because of Miguel, and that's about it, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. Hey, shout out to Jeremy Alcoba. He came from he like did. 20 yeah, seconds. Yeah, 22nd. To fourth. Yep. Just Unbelievable and, ride. Yeah. Animal. Yeah. Yeah, I saw him coming and he passed Santa probably with like three, four laps to yeah. go. And then, yeah, it was crazy. He had really good um, late race pace. Mm. Really, really good. And Lopez didn't. It was a complete opposite. <sighs> I've never seen a tyre oh, fall off a cliff like it. They were passing Mate. him through turn three, like, and where no one passes through mm. there. Like, it was like he was standing still. Yeah, and shaking his head like, like they're the problem. <laughs> nah, your rear Pirelli is the problem, yeah. buddy. <laughs> they must have spin the, the tyre up so much in that yeah, corner. Yeah, he obviously rode it way too hard. Yeah. yeah. But he's a bit like that. Yeah. He's a bit harsh. Yeah. Right? But we'll, like we'll touch on F1 later. But why I think of it, I just want to say they, they did 65 laps on a set of tyres last night in F1. Yeah. God. And, I did and, see that. At the and strategy, all, the yeah. shit, all the shit drivers had to pit, like Sergeant yeah. Stroll. Like these guys who are just aren't as good yeah. at, at, at tyre at, conversation. Well, tyre everything or yeah. racing. <laughs> They're not the, as good as driver. Like you can see the difference. Yeah. You know? yeah. Not saying Alonso Lopez is. You know, he's not up And there, it's different as well, I guess. But, yeah. Separates the men from the boys, that. Does. It does. And experience. Yeah. But then you look at Garcia. You know, he's only his second mm-hmm. year in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good through the Moto3, but people quick to forget. Garcia. Very good, very good rider. Garcia. Yeah. Could have won the title. Yep. Could have easily won that title. Fought for it for a few years. He's the one to watch. He is. This is why you listen to this podcast. The problem is, but if he wins the championships, he's going up. Probably not. Oh, Let's be honest. Yeah, where do you go? I, I don't think he would go up. Uh, you don't see many reigning uh, Moto2 250cc champions. I think because they don't really want to go to Honda or Yamaha. That's and then the all, And then all the, other, the three yeah. other teams are already done. Like they've already got star riders. So yeah. it's so hard. It's a tough one. Yeah, you wouldn't want to go. You wouldn't want to go to Honda. I'd rather go to Yamaha at this point. I'd rather stay in Moto2. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Same. But and that's why. And then, it, but then, the why point. are we laughing? This is the thing. What fucks me in the head? I'm like, why are we laughing? at Agua going. He should stay. When we've just said that, it just doesn't make sense. Well, no, but Agua has been in there for three or four more, four, four, four years, years now. I think. I think. Yeah, true. And hey, this is funny with Agua because he just threw away the title. Like I'm <laughs> yeah, never going to yeah, forget right. that. This is a crazy. He's a bit of a ever. punching bag. Yeah, he is. We love a punching bag. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's all Japanese. Yeah, because <laughs> they, they don't fight back. That's the problem. World War Two. Uh, Bruce Lee, but <laughs> Bruce Lee. He, he didn't make contact, did he? Was it a karate? No, nah, it wasn't. It was the real same. stuff. <laughs> same, same. Moto three results, Daniel. Moto three. Uh, David. I was just going to say, sorry. sorry. Uh, one last thing, Jake Dixon's speech. What do you think, Daniel? <laughs> it was a wild. As soon as I saw it, I pissed myself laughing, and I was like, oh my god, Daniel, I hope you're watching this. I was, I was watching it, and I, I wanted to like. Throw my food at the TV. How is he doing himself any favors looking like a dork like that, though? Like, 
I don't know. Thinks he's David fucking Goggins. <laughs> David Floggins, that's what he is. <laughs> Look, fair enough. I get the sentiment behind it. Like if you're struggling or whatever, you can get through stuff. Yeah, Amazing, yeah. right? Yeah, that's yeah. fine. I'll give you that. But the way he... Just goes about it. The way, he, the so, way arrogant, he, so arrogant. The, yeah, the way he brought across, I was like, relax, dude. You're not the first person this has happened to. You're not the last. And you've freaking finished third. There's <laughs> folks that have come off for collarbone surgery that week that have placed a bike on or gone and won a championship. Relax. Go back and sit in your gas gas box and don't get on the bike next round. Do everyone a favor and like just leave it alone. Lorenzo, Lorenzo, yeah, <laughs> broke his collarbone on the Friday, then just raced this on the Sunday. But yeah, that's what I mean. Didn't and yeah, didn't, didn't and, and Lorenzo didn't preach that much. That's saying something. And he loves himself. Jake Dixon, you've been shaved. <laughs> Nick off. <laughs> Oh, I forgot about that segment. I'm going to have to bring that I, back. I, 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 I got two segments. I got two segments. I did it for you. <laughs> like I said, sentiment, that's fine. But he was making it out as if, like, he was the best thing since sliced bread. And, like, if you're gonna he be, went through so much. Like, if come you, on, man. If you're going to be like that, at least just back the results up all the time. Like, the dude's got zero points <laughs> so <laughs> far. So Pe- Pedro Acosta broke his femur, femur. two years ago. And won five races, almost won the championship. Yeah. Did, was he going, look at me. I yeah. come back from broken. Come on, bro. Leg it. Marquez almost went blind. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, <laughs> like if you're going to do it, you got to back. If you're going to be arrogant, you got to back it up. Hey, remember. And he, a third he, place isn't good enough because everyone crashed either Jake Dixon. <laughs> yeah, you got a bit lucky there, too. <laughs> <laughs> He's Jake, nowhere. You Jake, have been shaved. Jake Dixon, come on, bro. The only good thing about him is his bike's a cool color, and that's about it. Yeah, they got a good. They actually have a good livery. Got the blue that. one. Yeah, it looks yeah, good. I'm not a fan of that. Really? Yeah. I like it. Anyway, anyway, Moto Three. <laughs> See you, Jake Dixon. <laughs> David Alonso first. Wow. Even Atola second. Uh, Jose Antonio Rueda third. Colin Byer fourth. David Munoz fifth. Danny Holgado sixth. Luca Lunetta seventh. Jacob Ralston eighth. Felipe Farioli, ninth, and Adrian Fernandez, tenth. Dragon, if you looked up racecraft in the dictionary, David Alonso's face is on it. <laughs> He's incredible, oh, man. That little Colombian. How good is he? What do you reckon they're giving him to keep, keep him so oh, fast in Colombia? <laughs> He's mm. incredible. So he's he's probably the next X Factor, isn't he? Wow, it's shaping up to be that way, yeah. man. He's bloody pretty good. He knows. Like, who knows? Until he gets the Moto2, me and Daniel will give our Sergio Garcia verdict. Yeah. Um, um, but at the moment, yeah, he just makes like, everyone look stupid. Yeah. And it's really hard to to shine above a lot of everyone else in that paddock, especially yeah. Moto3. Yeah. Yeah, so, to really stand out as hard. Stand out. Yeah. Um, yeah, you go. I was going to say, because when you think of it the last few years, like, even when... Uh, Guevara won his championship. Mm. Like he stood out, but not as much. Like Foggia was still there, Massey was still there. Yeah. Man, no one wins back to back either in Moto Three. Like yeah. no, like it's so hard to have a like a a few race wins. I remember like Martin on that on the Moto Three where he got all those poles. Yeah, it didn't mean he won every race. He didn't either. win any yeah. race. Like he was polled. I think he polled like what fourteen out of the twenty races yeah, that year something or something. Wild. Yeah, and won yeah. like four or five. So. Yeah, it's um, it's super exciting for the future. All yeah, in so different tracks as well. He's dominating, mm. or not dominating, but just dominating the last three laps. I guess. Like, yeah, ice cold, as you like to say. Yeah, there's confidence man. and more confidence, more yeah. confidence, yeah. and yeah, he's looking real Far good. Out. He's looking good. Hey, shout out to Jacob Rulestone, another pod favorite. <laughs> I think uh, P8 man. from yeah. from 16th on the grid as well. Battled his way he's through. Unbelievable. Was, he was in the leading group for quite a bit. I was watching him a yeah. lot. Um, Great experience for him. Yeah, and he, his best results so far. So shout out to Jacob. He's oh man, he's killing it. Another no. one, another Aussie killing it. He's one to watch out for. That's what happens when you come on the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> it is good luck. It's the yeah. podcast effect. You know, maybe not for Joel, but <laughs> he's still having a good season though. Yeah, it was just a bit unlucky. Joel's gonna win a race this year. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's come leaps and bounds. Once he gets yeah. into Philip Bowen, he's got the bike underneath him. It's gonna be a real shot at that. Yeah. I reckon. A little bit of misty rain around, you know. He'll come out of the clouds. You never know. I think uh, I think they're going to be looking good. I reckon Jacob's going to be fighting for a win by the end of this year as well. Like, he's doing yeah. that well. Such a tight field, though. Isn't like, it? And to hold your nerve as well. Like, you're not going to lead the pack and you're not going to win by five seconds. Like, no, you're going to... it's, what, once a year that might yeah, happen. Yeah. yeah. In like, motor three. It's just... You're just going to have that... And we'll talk... To, when we spoke to, Jay, um, to, to Joel on the podcast... 
he's like, you know, if I race in Australia, they would call me the most aggressive rider yeah. out there. Yeah. But these little Spanish... The Spanish in the particular, they they're just, the most aggressive. They're so aggressive and there's just no whole bars. And then they just, just chuck it up the inside, run wide, then come back and like it's just, yeah. It is a different race craft, I think. Oh, 100%. It is yeah, it's just different mentality. Growing up with it to, when you're, from when you're a kid to now, like it's, it is different. It is different. Like they're just, we're not as aggressive here in Australia, I don't think, but who knows? No, I don't think they are. But mm. those bikes also allow it. The tyres that allow yeah, it. That's right. You know, there's a lot of factors at the same time. So good. It's going to be good at Mugello. <sighs> Mugello. Mugello Moto3 is probably the best race in the world yep. in any motorsport. Yeah. I don't think there's anything better. Better than endurance? That's got, got the start, start line's pretty good in endurance. But yeah, 17, 17 riders going into yeah, turn nah, one. It's insane. Um, yeah, going over that crest. Into yeah. San Donato. Again, Magello's probably got the best names as well for uh, corners. Mm. Side note. So yeah, anyway, that's Moto3. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, nothing really crazy to report on. Nah. Just, it was a good race. It was it a good was race. Nothing overly exciting, but... Mm. I mean, we, we expect a lot, don't we? Yeah, it's, it's always hard. Yeah, no, there was no, um, there was like a last lap battle, but no one could just throw it up the inside of Dava Alonso. It was just like half a meter too fast. Mm. F1, happen. boys. Bit of a farce in the end, I think. Yeah, don't you just hate it when it's like 11.30 and there's a massive crash and they got to rebuild a barrier and they're going to try and stay up and you're just like, oh my God. Uh, I, I was more, <laughs> it's more the fact that these cars are just so big and just outgrown this circuit. Oh, that, it really has, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. It has. It's nuts. And it's become apparent this year out of any years because there's just, they obviously had no pit stops because they could change their tyres on the red flag at the start of the race. and That's a problem. Wow. It was just, even my old man, he was he was texting me going, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bed. I couldn't care less. Like, Monaco Grand Prix is supposed to be the pinnacle of, of the sport and um, – Super disappointing. Even the commentators, oh, the listening, commentators, yeah, listening that, to like it. it was a joke. Yeah. Like Ted's in the pit lane going, "This is just so boring." Like, yeah, what do you say? Like, what are you supposed to say? Crofty's trying to get everyone up and about. Yeah, he says, "I know I say that every year, yeah. but it's just a chess match." Yeah. And it's like, yeah, chess match where no one can make no, a move. That's no, right. no <laughs> one can. Absolutely nothing happened. Yeah, yeah. So Verstappen came to the pits uh, and put fresh tires on, and then was still behind Russell, and yeah. Russell didn't pit, you know, and and still kept him behind. So yeah, just a farce. But um, results. Uh, Charles Leclerc first. Hey, so got that uh, duck off his back. Yes, that's awesome. Awesome. Yes, amazing. For let's him. let's concentrate on the positives from now. Yeah, Oscar Piastri second. Awesome amazing. Stuff. Uh, Carlos Sainz third. Lando Norris fourth. George Russell fifth. Max Verstappen sixth. Jesus, I haven't heard that for a while. Yeah. Lewis Hamilton seventh. Yuki Tsunoda eighth. Alex Albon ninth. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't believe it. Pierre Gasly in an Alpine tent. Oh, I know, isn't that amazing? Wow. We'll, we'll dissect that crash between the teammates in a sec. But I wanted to bring a little hot take of my own to the Is podcast. Is this the hot take you're talking about today? So we talk about domination, okay? And we talk about Max Verstappen dominating this season. 31 points ahead. Yeah, yeah I did notice that. 31 points ahead. How many points is Martin ahead? 40. 39. 39. Yeah. I know there's two races, I get that, but it's not as, as far apart as what everyone's saying. No, you're yeah. not wrong. And they're I talking like on commentary, they said, oh, um, Verstappen has nothing to lose. He can just come and put whatever tie he wants. Was, yeah, he does. He needs the points. Absolutely, he's, he's, he does. He's, he's, won, he's won race from retiring and Leclerc winning fastest lap, and it's a five-second difference. I'm oh, sorry, five-point five five point difference. Point difference. Like, it's, um, so people have to have to consider how how close the clerk is and that Ferrari's just getting better and better and that's the super exciting going into the second half of the season. Imagine he takes him to the promised land. But imagine though, like yeah. bro, like we're watching the first half of the season, everyone's just assuming Max is going to dominate. 31 points. Yeah. A race win and a sixth place. Yeah. You know, so that's my hot take and I was waiting for that the whole, uh, whole pod. Now, it's a good point you make. Obviously, you had the mechanical in Albert Park. I don't know how much points he would have lost in that. Well, yeah. 20, 18 points because Leclerc finished second. Yeah, so there's that. But, yeah, it's it's closer than what I think people expect. And going into Canada, I believe, next. Montreal, two weeks. That will be a – Queen's a, birthday. A big um, big sign of what's to come. Like if it's Ferrari's up there again of McLaren and they're really pushing him and, and, and get a win, then, okay, maybe the championship's a lot, a lot different than we think. They're saying this, this 
Red Bull is just super hard over the curbs, just so stiff. Okay. So and that's a big, big, big thing for yeah. for Canada. Those first couple of corners are mm. riding those curbs. So it's going to be really, really interesting. And look, such a good circuit, mm-hmm. such a good circuit. Super. One of my favorites that. that one. Just to dissect a couple of things. First lap crash. I mean, what did you guys think? Well, look, I'm pretty happy that we gave, it gave us some type of talking point. <laughs> Yeah. For this, uh, for yeah, this. Otherwise, it would have been, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, race results, cool. See you, boys. <laughs> Jeez, it's funny. I watched that incident and I automatically go, oh, my God, K Mag, what an idiot. Yeah. Um, what an, uh, like, and then I'm looking back and I'm thinking, Perez probably could have given him a bit of room. Yeah, it's just, it, it goes back again to has the cars outgrown just, the track. That's oh, right. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. And maybe, yeah, maybe you're right. Um, he was really trying to put it up the inside, but, or the outside, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and it's and it's unfortunate, I guess, in the way because it's Magnuson who's always in trouble, you know. I know, and their commentators automatically go. They would put him over the coals. Yeah, oh, of course. Yeah. And then Button watches the replay and goes, "Oh, Perez probably could have given him a meter." But yeah, I mean, it's happened so quickly. The other thing is, K Mag was racing Hulkenberg on the outside. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So if he lifted, Hulkenberg probably would have passed him as well. So. And damned if, you, if yeah. you do, damned if you don't. But you're yeah, you're, ra- you're racing a Red Bull for 18th place. Okay, so. Yeah, you you're no, gone anyway. You can't ha- you can't put your nose where it doesn't belong. And so. they and they know if they give up a position at the start, they're Is probably it? not getting it back. Yeah, well, they're not going to get it back. So Ocon <laughs> chucks up the inside, Gasly, Portier, first lap of Monaco. No, no, you don't do that <laughs> on your teammate, on your teammate. So I'm not gonna. They did broadcast this on the on the, <clears> but it looks like they're gonna make a change. I think they're so they sound like they're so pissed off that that team. So Ocon out. Calling it early and Jack doing in. Oh, Oi. Okay. Get so up. Might be before the end of the season, but it looks like next year because yeah. I've I've, I've said it from the strong, start. Strong, strong words from, from the team from team principal. I like that. Yeah. Get him out. Well, bestie, I think bestie. That, and you need later. something yeah. different. You can't have the two Frenchies in there just yeah, pottering on. around. Well, they're know? not doing anything anyway. No. Knock-ons hasn't done anything. It's eating snails and whatnot. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, track changes. I think I was doing some research today, and um, where Portier is, where that accident happened, yeah, there is there is an option to go left there. Yeah, yeah. And there's a long sort of highway style of. Yeah, I've seen yeah. that. And I'm thinking, geez, it, it could make some changes, but I just don't know what's. Um, I just don't know what's stopping them. Who knows, man? But like, is that going to fix all their issues? It's obviously not. Um, they just need. No, they need a. It's uh, too tight. Just too tight. Yeah. The, but the track's fine, as in, I, I'm happy with the track layout. As it is, but it needs one more straight with a with a DRS and yeah. a passing opportunity. That's and all it needs. It, it needs, needs one passing opportunity. It needs yeah. one with a wide, like a highway style of yeah, with a passing opportunity with a hairpin that comes back towards. I've seen what you're talking about. It's that yeah. left hand that goes yeah. all the way up along the water. But so they need to do something because uh, yeah, it's amazing though. Like the packed it was the grandstands were packed. Of course, the, the, yacht, the harbor was cracked. It was packed. A hundred thousand dollars to berth your boat there for the weekend. <laughs> Like a hundred grand, and That's there would so be th- there would be a thousand boats in there. I reckon. Oh, like, there yeah. was so many, and there's two or three harbors as well that yeah. you don't see. So, yeah, um, is, is should it stay? Are you guys still on the camp that it should stay? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They just need to make a change to the track. But if they don't, they can't. To say they rule it out, can't do it. No, get rid of it then. Yeah, I don't know. There's tr- there's a lot of tradition there. What do you think, Tom? Um, I think they got to do something different. So is it like, I mean, I was reading today some crazy things like a, um, a mandatory three pit stop race, um, something along the lines of that. Yeah. Like they have to just do a special, because obviously it's a special track. Of okay? course. There's not, they, wouldn't, they would never allow a track like this ever again. So they, even if, they, if someone said uh, Madrid came and I want a street track and I want it to be like this and it was like Monaco, nah, it's not yeah. happening. No, it's yeah, not happening. Yeah. So it's a unique track. It's a unique place. It's a unique, probably one of the most unique events in the world in motorsport. So... Why don't have something different? Yeah, they've got to change it up. They do, yeah. Well, I think um, I saw a funny interview. It was with Max and George Russell afterwards. And they're like, Max is like, oh, it was just such a boring race. We're going to go for a run afterwards. Like, it was so boring. And they're like, oh, what, what would you do to change it? And they're like, oh, mandatory pit stops. Yeah. Make it like three mandatory pit stops. And then um, George Russell actually says something funny. And he goes, um, or oh, maybe we get out of our car for a lap, run around, do, run around, uh, the, do one lap around the thing running and then get back in our cars. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how they, uh, just the mental fatigue. The I mental mean, fatigue is the biggest thing of like that Like how circuit. boring that would have been. Like they were lifting, they were lifting like probably 100 metres before the braking zone. 
Like it was crazy. Like they look like I was like they went on board of some of the on like Albon. They went on board. I'm like, oh, he's slow. He's going slow. No, he's not. He's just pottering around. Like yeah. it's nothing like I've ever seen. Sunday so, drive. It was. And they all were saying it's just so boring. Yeah. It's super, it's been like this. And then the last couple of years, it's helped because of the rain as well. And which probably helped Imola as well last year. So definitely. I don't know. Yeah. Look, I don't, I don't it's been a tough, look, t- tough, look up, t- tough couple of weeks for F1. Yeah, it has been. I mm. just don't know what, yeah, what I, I wouldn't, I don't want to see it gone because I love the prestige of it. Of course. Yeah. But it's, if you're going to miss a race to watch on TV, that's the yeah, one. That's the one. <laughs> you know, like that's what's the, Double edged sword, almost all it. So Bob, I chucked it on, seen the crash. I was like, all right, well, this will be what 20, 30 minutes at least. Mm. Went to bed, woke up with two laps to go just by accident. Oh, really? Yeah. And I was like, all right, well, that's obviously going to be the end result. Beautiful. Bro, that was- Turn that one off. <laughs> it was just to bed. It was just like, like Lando could have probably pitted and got ahead of Russell mm. uh, with fresh tyres, but you know, why is it worth the risk? It might have no been a problem in the pit stop. Then he would have got passed by Russell and then he would have just finished behind Russell. Like, so <laughs> not worth it. There's, it's just not worth it. Uh, there was one, uh, one, la- like one pass on, <laughs> on like non DRS assisted pass. There wasn't even a DRS assisted pass, I don't think. Uh, and it was just such a tie difference. So, yeah, yeah, it's two hours of my, well, three hours of my life. I'm not <laughs> going to get back. The McLaren looked good though. Oh, Dude. yeah, didn't it ever? There's been a few good center tributes. I oh, had yeah, the boots and gloves as well from yeah. Peko. Yeah, Hunter Lawrence had his yes. center tribute. Oh, that's that was cool. That looked really that cool. Mint. For Molbro Hunter. Dude, he, back wouldn't, be, he wouldn't have been live when Senna was born. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Crazy. That's so cool, though. It's like an inspiration, I the suppose. The effect. Yeah. It was um, interesting watching Max after the crash and like they're all back in the pits and he's like just chilling, having a laugh in his pit garage, <laughs> like legs crossed. And George Russell was like all stern and serious. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, this guy's the most relaxed person in the grid. Like, there's something in that though. There is. It just, but there must be a game face when he puts that helmet on, I suppose. Of course. Um, but yeah, I mean, going through like, going through the, as we touched on before, the mental fatigue, like you looked at Stroll, I think made a silly mistake. He was just cruising, touched the barrier. Like so many little things can happen. Yeah, yeah there's no, obviously there's no room for error still. That's the thing. Yeah. Watching the onboard though of Monaco and you're like a mid pack or you know fourth last or whatever, that's a nightmare trying oh. to get through that first corner. It is yeah. an absolute nightmare. I oh, know they always went to a, they almost went to a standstill. Yeah, they almost do. But there's just no room for error, error again. Yeah, like, no. and if you you know touch someone's tire, or whatever, it's front wing damage mm. and it's game over in that yeah. in that sport as well. Yeah, exactly. So it was an absolute shambles, but. No dice. There's really not much else to add, to be honest. <laughs> what else? What else do you talk about? I got, well, I I got the got, crash, and that's it. I got something up here. It's just come out about half an hour ago. Uh, Joss Verstappen has come out and said the Red Bull era of dominance seems to be over, oh, and nice. that they should focus more on racing. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> He's such a douchebag, that guy. <laughs> yeah, he's like, they should focus more on racing and mutual communication again rather than on other things. So, I don't know. No, I don't know either. He's, they, a, bit, he's a bit strange. In the I mean, there's a fundamental issue with that car at certain circuits. Like we looked at Saw at Singapore last year. Max pulled one out of the bag last week in Imola to get pole in the win. So, I mean, not the win, but the, with the pole. So, um, yeah. And the win. He won as well. Imola, didn't he? Max, yeah. So, seems like so long ago. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, there's a fundamental issue with that car at Street Circuit. So, yeah. We'll see what I can do. It, it, it's going to be really interesting in Montreal. That'll be a real... That'll be the real... Test. Yeah, that'll be the real test. Because it is sort of that half street circuit, half mm. road circuit. It's not used as much as like a normal street it's circuit. Kind of like is, an so. Albert Park in a way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on an, built on an island. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah, that gets massive good. crowds, Canada, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like Australia in that way. Boys, hot b- takes, burning questions, hot takes. We need like a little emoji, Curtis. Can you get like some fires or something coming up here? Bit of pyro. Sh- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need something. That was a Dave Superbike Shaw comment. That one. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can listen to the man, two-time champion. <laughs> When's he coming on? Yeah, when do we get to? Oh, we nearly had him. Um, oh, really? If he wasn't, fly- he would have come on if he was uh, wasn't flying out this morning. Should have changed his flight. Yeah, what's he doing? We'll need about two hours of, of you know, memory on that card because he was just talking about himself the whole time. <laughs> How can I make this about me? 
<laughs> Shout out, Dave. Yeah. Legend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It took us into deep water. It took you into deep waters <laughs> drinking on Saturday night. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we run for his money. That's for sure. Far out. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Go on. <laughs> go on. Go on. Go on. Um, all right. Thank you for everyone sending the. Uh, we love it. Keep sending them in oh. your hot takes and burning questions. It's so fun. It's hard to pick as well. It's very, yeah. very, 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 very. So please keep them. Yeah, keep them coming in. We love them. Um, uh, let me get the first one up. Give me one sec. Just talk amongst yourself for a second. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah. Mm. Um. Nikki D3604, Alicia Spargo is the Rossi of Aprilia. He developed Aprilia the way Rossi developed Yamaha. Oh, he, he, he developed the Aprilia. Probably not what Rossi did for Yamaha. <laughs> How many championships have Aprilia got? What was his name? Uh, Nikki D. Nikki D. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't, see, I don't think he was on the same, same, not the same planet as Rossi. Like Rossi turned that team on its head and won championships straight away. But... He's obviously done a lot for the um, for the Italian factory. No, 100%. Mm. You can't take that away, but I think to the extent that Rossi did, probably not. I'm with you. Uh, that underscore shady underscore V4. <laughs> Is that you, Kirby? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maverick is a bigger blue ball than Miller. <sighs> Oof. At the moment, probably because we're banking on him a little bit. Yeah, you don't expect much from Miller anymore. So yeah, yeah blue that's balls. right. Yeah, and that Mav did give us the win. Yep. Yeah. And that's where that's, yeah, that's where, where the blue yeah, ball no, comes. That's, that's a good. That's a good one. Yeah. Well done, that shady. <laughs> <laughs> um, at artist, artist anal bogan. What? I'm not. I'm. I'm just reading it. I'm. I promise. Peko is the world's fastest sook. Oh, good call. Great call, Daniel. Come on, Bart. This is the reason why there's bogan in his name. <laughs> I thought it was anal. Was it his name? <laughs> anal bogan. Okay. Artist anal bogan. <laughs> That's my nickname. Artisanal. Is that a word? <laughs> um, no, I wouldn't say he's the biggest sook. But I wouldn't say he's much nah, of a sook. No, nah, no. Nah. He's just, I don't know. There's just something about him. But <laughs> Bad call. Yeah, he's just not Italian. You know what I mean? He's just not he's Italian. Just, he doesn't have the Italian no flair. He doesn't yeah, represent right. Italians like they should be represented. We yeah, love not the Italian like, flair. Like Lukey, Luke and I, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Not the true bull. Oh, yeah, that's right. Luke's pretty northern, but <laughs> <laughs> he's not, no tan. I'm more tan he's than Luke. He's Germ- Germanic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it is very northern. <laughs> Jim Townian. <laughs> uh, great granddaddy was probably in the SS, I reckon. <laughs> um, at Paul Varlo 73, Peko looks more terrified at every press conference when Mark is there. He knows what's coming. Interesting. That's a, that, that is a hot take, okay? That is a genuine hot take Yeah. because I haven't noticed that. Yeah. So super hot take, yeah. I mean, I th- I think Peko looks just cool, calm, and collected as normal. To <laughs> yeah, be honest. that's right. I don't think he looks any different. <laughs> but boys, let's just go back to that a second. So Peko, Mark Marquez, same bike, same team. Does Mark does Mark just wipe the floor with him? I don't no, know if he wipes, wipes the, floor, the floor, but I think he'll beat him. I think on the same bike doesn't have to be a factory. Ducati. Imagine the mind Primark. games though, that was well. Oh, oh awesome. my god, It'd be awesome. Actually, it's gonna be good for the sport. Yeah. Ends up really healthy, but yeah. it'll be even more healthy again. Yeah, I'm with you. I, he seems pretty normal, though. Doesn't seem like he's freaking out. Yeah, I wouldn't say so. Mm. Or he's just he's hiding it very well. But yeah. I think he's looking. He, he always kind of just looks just, Bleh, boring. Yeah, yeah. like there's not, not much going on. You know, it's, that's just him. That's why he's like a little bit boring. But you know it's crazy. The people around him, like his girlfriend and his sister and stuff, are just f- like just freaking out the whole yeah. time. Like they're watching. The, they kind of watch the. But they're more Italian than him. Yeah, they're true. Yeah, different. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, Mister J Pole, amazing Saturday sprint, boring Sunday race. What? Yep. I wouldn't say it was boring. <laughs> Rewatch it, dude. Yeah. Jeez, that's harsh. The sprint the, the, race was better. The, the sprint race was better. Yeah, but oh, it wasn't. I wouldn't a say it was race. boring. I think it was. It, it was, was a good race to was, watch. Yeah, calculated. Yeah, if, if you were, and it had a bit of everything as well, like crashes and passing yeah, and people I coming it was through good. the field. And yeah, watch um, Indi- watch Indonesia through. twenty-three. That's a boring race. Yeah. Oh, Sepang. Well, Sepang yeah, twenty-three, even more boring. Yeah. That was the most that boring was a race. Fest. That yeah. was a terrible race. That's a boring race. That's a Monaco. Yeah, that was. From a tracker you can actually pass. There's bloody no excuses. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
at Dingleberry Hand Pump Forty Six. <laughs> no, bro, no bro, 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 you can't do this to us. <laughs> Look, what? Hang on. <laughs> what? Forty Six as well as a Rossi fan. <laughs> vale, vale. <laughs> Dingleberry Hand Pump. 46. Could be the greatest Instagram name of all time. Fuck. Dingleberry Hand Pump. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck it. What the fuck? That's crazy. (laughs) Uh, Bestia was right to ignore the long lap penalty because it was wrongly given. (sighs) I don't know if he was right to ignore it, but I think it was I just think that he's in the stage of his career he just doesn't need to do that sort of thing no of course not of course it's not a good look at all like if that was like a Zarko and he's like fuck it I'm 18th anyway I'm a t- yeah. pretty much a glorified I'm just test here to rider a, I'm here to collect yeah. a paycheck come back and you come into the pits and go oh, I got a 30 second penalty who cares Yeah. but you guy, you're fighting you for, for, your, for, your, for your life yeah there. for your career you're trying yeah. to show Aprilia or another team that you're, what you're made of and yeah. you go and do that that's just that's a shit look yeah it's a yeah. stupid look but he's better than that now. He's he a, is. This is a career crossroad for him. It is. So, and he's normally cool, break. calm, collected, and he as well. Like he's got the flair about him. <laughs> but he, um, <laughs> but he can actually. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a burp one out then. With the water, got me good. Push the bur- Can you push the burp button next time, please? <laughs> Sorry, bro. It's out of reach. <laughs> oh. But he's uh, yeah, not looking great. So. Yeah, me talking about a knee just gets me fired up. <laughs> All right, last one. Braden Hardcastle, David Alonso to be thrown a GP contract for 25. Yeah, a bit N- soon, I think. Yeah, too soon. Not happening. I like I like the uh I like the acknowledgement of David Alonso. Yeah, but absolutely. Yeah, credit where credit's due. But it's uh it's, I don't think it's a thing. So out of hundreds hot takes, that's the best you come up with. That's yeah? the best I've got. <laughs> okay. It, it, all the other ones are basically just saying how good we are when we're going to blow up. So <laughs> oh, we I, can, I, can, I can read 70 of them. I think the listeners might get a little bit bored of it. They already know how, they already know it. So. <laughs> oh, goodness. That would be the Patreon episode. <laughs> <laughs> that will be coming up soon. Summer break. There will be something spicy coming through I've been there. asked by yeah. a lot of people we want a full uncut pod. Oh, okay. Drunk, um, throwing chairs at each other, crap like that. Ah, oh, we'll do a Patreon episode. <laughs> yeah. I've but heard a lot of people ask. We will that. if if you actually you know what, write in, message us if you want that. I actually want to know. Yeah. Because we'll do an episode <laughs> where we'll go. Um, yeah, very loose. Yeah, yeah. don't, don't go, don't loose. go leaking it and stuff, guys. Like, yeah, because yeah. we're gonna we, say some stuff that'll get us cancelled. Yeah, but yeah. Don't be, go it, put yeah. it out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll be we going through like the depths of history and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, It'll be a three and a half hour pod. <laughs> some of our favourite cultural figures. <laughs> We'll be, our heroes we'll be, and we'll our be, heroes. We'll be really into painting. <laughs> we'll be really into painting for that one. Oh, uh, going to some crazy stories and, you know, what yeah. we like to do in our downtime. Yeah, so if you do want that, I actually, I'm a bit interested to know because we had a, remember, we did talk about this at one stage. We're going to do something like that. And we may have some something special for Magello coming up as well. This yeah, week. true. Mm. So uh, keep your uh, ear out. Um, oh, an Isle of Man starts. An Isle of Man. Oh, out. Right, it's all happening. It is. We'll have. We'll touch on that. We'll touch on that next week as well. Some, yeah. Some results. I think the first week's a bit of a no qualifying practice. practice, week. practice yeah. Qualifying. It's a week of practice. That yeah. It is. That. It's so cool, I was looking yeah. at the schedule today, and it was like the newcomers um, practice one. So everyone who's new must go out for a practice yeah, time, which is pretty up. cool. Yeah. Because obviously they can't ride it at full pace for any time of the year. So it's so crazy. Such a crazy sport. Yeah. It is. Magello this week, very excited. Yeah. And um, just a to touch on as well, Jet Lawrence now 24-0 in AMA motocross. <laughs> so he was 22 from last season, went 1-1. One, one and one, And um, so Hunter got second overall as well. Oh, so it's man. Aussie 1-2. That's legendary. And his um, Alp ski looked amazing. So he just, Jet's just taken off. Again, and again, if people can write in as well. I want to know, maybe we'll clip this as well. Why, what's with all the hate with Jet? Overseas, is it just the Americans not uh, just not liking them? Uh, Patri- Surely it's got to be that's patriotism, yeah. Bro, yeah. And I think he's kind of young and out there as well, is a bit different. But is, is that all it is? Because I, I really don't know. Because he's, he's just a he's just a super fast young dude. Might be a good question for Mick Sinclair. Yeah, maybe. Shout out to Mick. We'll get yeah. him on soon. Yeah, because I just don't I don't know why. Like the dude's just an animal, and he was loved like three years ago. And he's marketed himself better than anyone's ever done it by the seams in motocross. Like, mm. He has all those, you know, Daniel, you've seen all those merch drops. That, yeah, it's sick. You know, him and Hunter do it and they sell out straight away. But yeah. 
Like obviously, I'm sure he doesn't care. He laughs in his, he cries in his three Ferraris. Yeah, that's right. He's won seven titles in a row. He's 24 in motocross. Like just making everyone look silly. Probably sick of the domination. Yeah, I like I, I saw a comment. It was like one guy was like, "Oh, motocross is turning AMA motocross is turning into Formula One." I was oh, like, come "Do you on, want bro. a stretch, bro?" <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. She call. She call. She So, anyway, I think good yeah, for us, but to see him up there, it's awesome for us Aussies. We're always gonna be biased, and we love it. But uh, I still, I love Ricky Carmichael, one of my heroes. He did twenty four and zero. James Stewart went 22, 24 and zero as well. Like, just because they're a different um, nationality, like who cares? It's just I love seeing. I still love seeing dominance. Yeah, love seeing greatness. Yeah. You love seeing greatness take place, and that dude is greatness right in front of your eyes. Isn't and he ever? He's yeah. changed the game. He's changed he's, the game. He's really changed. His riding up. styles changed the game. Yeah. Like yeah. everyone, all those kids will be riding like him now. Yeah, that's, that's a big thing. Trying to. Yeah, and that's the thing with motocross. You try and ride like him, and then the payoff is not like it's not massive, and the downside's huge because <laughs> yeah, you're going to break a collarbone or a leg or whatever you're going to do. Like it's such a dangerous sport. Mm. So Heck yeah. I was watching it um, on the weekends. Some of the just the highlights anyway. The motocross at uh, Parlor, and like man. I don't know how he does it. Mm. It's just that it's, dude can come to Melbourne, and go out to a nightclub, and no one recognizes him. So yeah, that's right. It's crazy. Wild. And then he's in the states, and everyone seems to hate him for some reason. Like, just let just the kid have win. his shoes. Yeah, you just can't let like just enjoy life. Like, oh, I'm sure he does. Yeah. Like, I sure, I'm sure they don't care. Like, if, and I think he's got his brother beside him, so and he's doing awesome. Yeah. And I think as well, when like you've grown up wanting this gold, and like you know, he's obviously gone through hard times. Like, I've heard stories of him say like they could only eat tuna sandwiches or whatever because they just couldn't afford anything mm. by the time you get to that point you're just like you know f you all yeah. i don't care anyway it's my family and my friends that's yeah it. that's it you know so 100%. it's just it's uh it's great to see anyway so it's all exciting speaking about rc did you see he was at um was it f1 or gp this weekend he was at motor gp cray for um yeah interviewed him yeah and developing the new triumph motocross a 450 bike this time i think so oh, they're doing 450 now yeah so i think the new ones landed here yeah the 250. Has, yeah. have you seen it I haven't seen it in person, but I, I saw like a video of it getting uncrated. That's cool. At Steve O's. So. It looks all right. It looks I good. I don't mind the colours. It looks good. So. It looks better than the Ducati. Yeah, but the Ducati dressed up in the like factory motocross. It actually looked, it looked half all right. right. Yeah. It looks yeah. half all right, but it's still weird seeing a Ducati in the Mamex yeah, GP right. and a Triumph. It's still weird. It is strange. I think Axel Hodges was there too. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. The, car, the guy that does all the stunts and that on Instagram uh, and that. Yeah, all yeah, yeah. I reckon they've interviewed Carmichael a few times, weirdly enough, at Barcelona. He must have coached that corresponding MXGP race because he was must. there for MXGP with Triumph and go. doing all that. So it's goat doing goat things. Mm, good to see him getting around it. Yeah. Magello this weekend, boys. Let's so, go. Um, best round of the year. One and of the best. big event Thursday night, Benzina. Get your tickets. Let's Hope to it. see you all there. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks, boys. See you, mate. See you. See you, fellas. <laughs>